Welcome back to this next video where we're going to finish off our payments module or our payments flow. What we're going to do is we're going to add a button and that button is going to have a bunch of workflows tied to it where it will uh, create a customer in our Stripe account, uh, charge that customer, subscribe them. Um, you know, you'll be given the opportunity to decide if you want to give someone a seven day trial, a 14 day trial, no trial, just have them sign up directly. Um, your call, you will have control over this, and I'll point out, you know, where where you would update that setting uh, here in the video. So why don't we go ahead and get started by just adding a button, and we'll go ahead and just remove the style on that, and then get it going, you know, with one of our more normal styles using our Leto font. 14 looks good. Not a fan of the huge letter spacing personally, but let's go ahead and say get full access now and let's bump that up to 16 do we want to make it bold sure and then let's go around this of 10 because I like the way that looks 35 34 on our uh, spacing here looks good to me I'm just gonna net, uh, pull this down a little bit and then let's go ahead we're gonna add this visual element of an image here at this at the bottom and we're going to upload this Powered by Stripe 150 thing included with the pack of stuff. And we're going to put that at 90 by 12. And we'll just go ahead and center that, horizon oh, center that horizontally. And that looks that all looks pretty good to me. Uh, what do we got for distance here? 47. Let's bring it up a little bit. Roughly in line with that. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, the latest here. And just a reminder. Uh, here's what our URL looks like. I know the video doesn't show this, um, but basically we have this UID on there that uh, is, you know, getting pulled down and when the page loads and we're going, it's going to find the, or it goes and finds the user and uh, by finding the user, it is able to locate that email address and give us more information. So that's wonderful. Um, oh yeah, one thing we want to do for this, we want to make sure that it's not fixed with and we want to allow this to be 200. Let's say 280 for this, and then just center that to wrap up our user interface here. And we're going to talk about, uh, we want to make this one fixed width. See that it's not. And okay, so this is going to be our UI. And let's go ahead and get things started in our workflow. Basically, you know, right? Someone can fill all the things out, but let's get it going where they click this and stuff happens. Okay, so when the page is loaded, uh, we've got this set state thing, and I'm actually I'm gonna go ahead and make another one because I like the uh, setup here. This group payments page, user email, user ID, uh, text, great, and then the value. We're actually gonna take this one, copy that. So then we're only looking up these things only one time. So paste that expression. The value is this get ID from the page URL. We'll actually use that here in a thing in a moment. Um, so get this get full access now. We're going to click start. And then what we are going to do is we are going to look for a thing called payment method. And list of all customers. Um, let's look for create. for external account. Ah, you know what? It's actually under something different. It is under create payment method with Stripe element. So this is this one there, because we have this element on the page, this one here, it will gives us access to uh, this other, this element actions workflow. It's not under plugins as I thought. Uh, okay, so that is going to create a payment method. And actually, one thing that we want to do is we want to, well, we'll allow that to happen. We'll allow this to happen. And then we'll come back. And so now under elements, uh, we want when a successful, uh, a Stripe element payment was created, we want stuff to happen. So this will create it. And then when that happens, because basically this goes out, talks to Stripe, and while it's having that conversation, you know, we don't know what's going on. So 
we're not going to run any other workflows just yet, and then we'll get notified. Stripe will tell you know be like, hey, we've got this payment thing. Do you want to use it? And yes, we do. So I'm going to go ahead and I am actually going to workflow uh, color event. I'm going to call this one green because this is the stuff that happens when it comes back as successful. Because you can imagine a scenario where someone types in a their credit card here, here and that uh, you know they use an invalid card or they have a typo and uh, you know, we don't know what their card number is, right? Only they do, and if they typo it, then we get an invalid payment. We need to do something with that. So actually, let's go ahead and create the other side of this. So when a Stripe element payment couldn't be created, and then we'll, we're not gonna do anything with that yet, but we're gonna mark it red. So, cool. All right, um, one thing that we want to do, while this is all going on, I'm gonna to navigate to our mobile, our normal mobile app here that we have, and I'm gonna look for this, uh, I think it's the plans area, has this unjoin a plan uh, thing. I'm gonna grab that and then copy it, head over back to the payments, and then I'm gonna paste this in here. Okay, why am I doing that? Well, uh, this looks pretty good, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna delete out these things and I'm gonna grab one of these. Uh, actually, first and foremost, I'm gonna paste it here, bring it down to size, and then drop it in here. Okay, so we're gonna say processing payment. So we're creating a little pop-up that uh, the users will see that when it's loading, they'll be given something to look at. <laughs> so he, over here on visual elements, grab this regular icon one. Don't use the material icon one because there's just not the option to uh, have what I'll show in a second here. So we're looking for kind of a circular thing. This, okay, I uh, like it. Make the icon rotate and then remove the styling on this one here because we're going to uh, give it a special color. And that is 373737. And then we're going to go 50 by 30. Maybe say 32. All right, center that horizontally. Looks pretty good. And then uh, why not? We'll just add the same. We're just going to do a control C there and control V. Just giving someone something to kind of look at and just have a, a nice experience as they're chilling, chilling out. Um, I'm gonna put this at 25. That's 37 there, and that's 44. Yeah, why not just go center horizontally and center vertically on this one? Okay, good enough. All right, so processing payment. So this thing, we're gonna call this one uh, payment group payment processing. And you can see where this is going, where we are going to show this. So over here, uh, actually, we're going to insert an action. And element actions, we're going to click show. And then we're going to show this newly created element, group payment processing. OK, so while it's doing that, uh, basically, we've got our UI down that when someone clicks this, payment is processing. Oh, OK. So it looks like we need to uh, maybe have that as centered, uh, fix width perhaps, make sure it's centered horizontally. Let's go ahead and make this one fixed width, or let's at least, no, let's just, uh, let's go like 140 for that. Fix width there, fix width here. Okay, cool. You know, there's a lot that goes into this, uh, having your UI correct, as well as having kind of the piping and the plumbing in the back end of your app working, right? So, um, sure, at this point, you know, none of us are any strangers to this. Okay, so let's go ahead now, and we are going to search for create customer here over in Stripe. And what are we gonna do? Well, we are going to insert the name from input first name, value, and then click into here, hit space, and then insert another value, the last name. And then for the email address, we've actually already got that here on the groups payments page, user email. Okay, so this is uh, just some 
you know, Stripe, when they're processing your credit card, uh, if they have the person's name and the email address, then they can, uh, you know, this is none of this is uh, actually required, but they can, you know, better process things so that they uh, can detect any fraud. All right, so next up, we want to do a thing called attach, so payment method. So this, you know, this one went out to create a payment method, which uh, has to do with this thing. Uh, where they, their card number is what they're going to use for their payment. So, but uh, here in our plumbing of stuff, we have to actually go and attach that. So uh, what you want to do is go to Stripe Element A's payment method ID. So that defines that. And the customer ID is going to be the result of step one here where we created this. So we know that this one will not run until this one you know, is successful. So that's a good kind of daisy chain thing happening there. And then we're going to do this thing where we're going to go update and we're going to update a payment method and the attaching and the updating is just a slightly different thing so this payment method ID we're going to go from a result from step two that kind of daisy change things so that way this one won't run until this one is completed which is good and then uh, let's see ah no 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 sorry it is not uh, I did the wrong one update uh, customer we want this payment method ID that's the one from step two to be here because this default thing this means that we're now that we've attached this payment ID we're just defining it as the default and so then grab the customer ID here from result of step one and basically this means that this customer uses this payment here's their default payment and with all of that set up now we can go and search for subscription here and hit create so we're going to create a subscription at last, which is great because this is how you'll get paid. Um, price ID. This is a very important point. This is where uh, back over here in our, our Stripe account, you the dashboard that you'll have, because we have not activated our account yet, if you're following along exactly with the course, and then go ahead and navigate to here to products and then click add products. All right, so this name of this thing, what products, uh, this is visible to people on a number of things. So you might wanna put your brand. So let's say Yoga Flow app subscription, subscription. And then this is just an optional description here if you wanted to add additional information, but uh, you know, not, not, not required. Standard pricing is what we want here. And then this is where you can choose. Do you wanna charge 12 99 Do you wanna charge 14 99 Do you wanna charge uh, 1999, $29.99, uh, whatever you think is a fair price for your service, this is where you define it. And again, you know, we're in the development world. This is test data. We're going to do this again in a, in a future video to completely define it. But basically, um, you know, we're getting all set up with uh, being able to test it and just ensure that everything's working properly prior to making live payments with real credit cards. So this uh, under pricing here, copy this price ID and then paste this over into uh, here just to control the control the yeah okay and then this is your opportunity here oh yeah for quantity make sure this is required field make sure you hit one for trial date if you do want to have one what I suggest doing is going to current date and time and then however you long you want that to be whether for one month or a certain amount of days if you did one month you would do like that uh, since I on the button I put 14 days we're gonna go days here and then four, uh, 14 uh, but actually I'm gonna leave this blank for one test and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at it differently uh, the payment method we, none of this if we don't send anything then it won't be defined or, or overwritten um, but basically yeah charge automatically all this stuff the payment method ID is already associated with this customer so we're good okay and then next up under data, go ahead and make changes to a thing. And this is, uh, we're making a ton of progress, right? In this video, I know we're down in the weeds, but we are really uh, dealing with the guts of creating this payment workflow so that you're able to accept payments and your app, um, you know, you only gotta do this once. And then years from now, you know, you can still be getting paid to the bank account that you define in your Stripe account. <laughs> Isn't that exciting, right? So, okay. Uh, so we're going to make changes to a thing. The thing we're going to make changes to, we don't know the current user. We're going to do a search for a user where the 
unique ID is equal to the group payments page user ID. All right, so now we found the user that we're working with. Uh, it returns a list of one, so we'll just grab the first item. And then we need to head over to our data area here, to our data types here for user. We have paid subscription. We'll update that that you know now if they're going to be paying. But we also want to update some other things, like we'll call it the Stripe customer ID. That'll be a text, and then the Stripe subscription subscription ID that will also be attached text because then you know if someone ever wants to cancel a subscri subscription what you know how do we go and find that so basically here let's start with paid subscription now they are at a yes and then if they uh, remember this is like you know their payment method worked and then we created a customer with them so if their payment method worked then all this stuff is going to happen it means they're you're getting they've started a subscription and or at least you know the trial and you're you know starting to get paid uh, assuming you know they pass the trial date for the free trial date so the customer ID go ahead and take the result of step one customer ID and then the subscription ID take the result of I think it's a uh, step four yep subscription ID and then what other things might we want to change you know what we don't actually have under our user we don't have anything for first or last name. I mean, maybe you want to email people. So we're going to say first name as a text, last name as a text. And then we'll just, you know, for good measure, we'll put their full name in in case there's ever any reason that uh, we would want to just have that information available to us. Uh, so here in our workflow, we're going to go look for first name and then input first name's value. And then last here, we'll go last name. And then last name, input last name's value. And then full name. And so here we'll want the first name value. And then I like to click out of it just to make sure I got my cursor right. Hit space. And then a new dynamic, <coughs> excuse me, data. And we'll look for last name and that value. So we know we got first name, space, last name. Cool. Um, what's up, what's up, what's up? All right, we've got that all set up then. And now, basically, we've ran all the piping. We just need to return quickly to the UI, and then uh, we'll be done with this section for creating subscriptions. All right, so what do we want to have happen? Well, we're going to want to hide the processing thing because we're no longer doing that. And we'll go ahead and hide the uh, the payments page, and then we'll show a confirmation page. So this payment one, we don't need that, and we have not created a confirmation page yet. Uh, we'll create that in the next video, and then we'll also handle the you know what would happen if like somebody again like they have a typo on the card. Like we need to just have a user interface that shows them something. So in the next video, we'll tackle that as well. I'll see you there.